Hi everybody, I am Phoenix and today I'm going to be talking about how to quit smoking. So, or how to quit anything really, you know, I guess this applies to whatever. So I used to smoke when I was 15 up until the age of 21. And I smoked quite regularly to begin with a pack a day. And then I ended up going into pouches and I'd have a pouch every three days. And I tried to quit several times, about five or six times. All right, and each time, you know, I'd spend a little bit longer away from smoking, but I'd end up going straight back. You know, as soon as something really stressful happens or crisis, I'd be like, oh, fucking need a cigarette. Really great sex. It's like, oh, I have to have a fucking cigarette after that. You know what I'm saying? And finally, three years ago, I was able to quit. And I haven't touched cigarettes since, not once. So how did I do it? Why, after five times of trying over all those years, did I finally stop and make the break? Because there was a change in how I approached the problem. Beforehand, I tried to commit to quitting. I quit cigarettes. I'm going to make this commitment that I'm never going to smoke smokes again. And sometimes I'd say, well, if I do smoke smokes, then I can't do this. Or here's a punishment. Or here's a... A removal of some reward or something like that. I try to do reinforcement schemes and it never worked. And then I changed my approach and I wasn't even consciously aware of it at the time. It's not like I actually thought, okay, I'm gonna quit again, but my quitting just happened. And then I thought about it and I realized why, and this is why. So at the time I was living with my brother and across the road from us, 24 hour gym opened up, Snap Fitness. I signed up, cause you know, my, my dream and aspiration was and is still to become a professional wrestler and entertainer. And so I worked out a lot, you know, five days a week and it was $25 a week, mind you. So I was thinking, all right, if I'm gonna be spending this much money, like $25 a fortnight, sorry, so 50 bucks a month, which is all right, for 24 hours, it's great. But I thought if I'm gonna be spending this much money, I wanna get my money's worth. So I went, you know, four or five days a week. And, you know, I realized, you know, what's the point in wasting my money furthermore on cigarettes just to undo all the hard work that I've been doing? Just to bring my health back down when I'm trying to get it back, get it up. And because of that, I didn't even decide to commit to quitting. I just quit. Cold turkey. Clear quit because there was a change in my psychology instead of me trying to commit to not doing something to quitting to a negative which when you think about it you can't really commit to a negative I won't do it what works far better is finding something to replace the negative with replace the old habit with new habits and I thought instead of trying to commit to that to what I'm not doing now I've committed to this, what I am doing. You know, instead of committing to quitting, I am committing to gaining. And what I was gaining was good health, muscle, all of that. You know, I committed to going to the gym and developing my health and fitness. And because of that commitment, as a consequence of that, I just stopped smoking. It just didn't make sense. It would have wasted all my money. Like I said, I done my hard work. What's the point? I had no desire for it. And the fact that I was working out actually helped a lot as well. It made me feel healthier. You know, I got a buzz from it and I felt just naturally high. Anyway, and I found myself a lot less depressed and stressed out, so I didn't really feel like smokes as often. But even if that wasn't the case and I didn't have the help from working out and being healthier, I think the basic principle remains. If you're trying to quit anything, whether it be cigarettes or alcohol, or any drug, or even some activity that's bad for you, or habit of any kind, or a relationship, instead of just committing to leaving it, and committing to quitting it, and just creating a void where it used to be, try to commit to something else. And a consequence of that is you can't go to that thing. So if you're in a toxic relationship, commit to yourself. And say to yourself, okay, I deserve the best life I can afford. And when I have children one day, I can then 
give them the best life that I can afford them because I've looked after myself and I'm a good person and not toxic because I've hung around toxic people. And if you make that commitment to yourself in your future and your children in your future, it might be easier to naturally stay away from toxic people and things that don't serve your greater interest. Just like with any drug. If you get a new job somewhere and in that new job, you know, you can't drink anymore or you can't do drugs and that job means a lot to you or it pays really well and you don't want to lose it anytime soon, then you, and you probably have done this in similar situations, you might stop doing something or put it aside, maybe temporarily, maybe permanently, just so you can keep that job. So you get the idea, it's that it's, it's finding something that means more to you, is more significant, has a greater purpose and more value to you. And not just something you, you think in your head, but something that really has more value. Commit to, all that, commit to that, and then naturally everything else starts to fade away because it's, it doesn't serve that greater interest. And that's, that's the secret, or at least that's the method that I used without even being aware of it. You know, I spent so long trying to quit. You know what I realized? That quitting isn't an action. It's not an action. It's not just something you go, okay, I want to quit. It's, and then bam, you just act and it happens. All right, quitting is a process. A process. It takes time. It takes time to disintegrate something that's been very well integrated into your life and very regular in a routine. And it takes time to reintegrate new things to help supplant it and substitute, replace it. You know what I'm saying? And my father, psychologist, he said to me that whenever you are trying to quit something, there is also that general pattern. Let's say in a relationship, two people are together, generally one person will leave the relationship, let's say it's an abusive one, they will leave for let's say two months and then they'll come back. Or they'll leave for a month and then they'll come back. And then some time will pass and things will get worse and it gets to such a point where the person needs to run away again. So they leave, but this time they leave for four months, five months. And this keeps happening. They keep coming back and they stay for, they stay for less time. All right? And then they leave again and they stay away for longer. And it's like two circles. If you see this as your habit or the relationship that you're attached to, that you're addicted to, that person, you're stuck with them. And if you see this circle as you, each time you leave, you come back, but you, you don't come back fully and you're not as enmeshed into that habit or that person, that relationship, as much as you were before. You don't stay in it for as long. And then when you finally leave, because you've had enough again, you actually stay away for longer. And it keeps happening like that. But each time you leave, you keep distancing further away until finally there is no coming back. And the two circles, you know, the thing you're addicted to and you are totally separate. So it's like, it takes time to get out of that. And it's a process of disintegrating and reintegrating with something else. You can, you can speed up the process instead of just trying to move away and then distract yourself, which people try to do. Find something that as a result of doing that, that thing you're committed to, no question about it, you have to stop doing this. And I think that, in my opinion, at least one of the most effective ways that you can conquer any addiction. So yeah, give it a shot, guys. Figure out what matters to you in contrast to what you're doing and what you're addicted to. And look at the future. Envision it as strongly as you can to the point where you can smell and taste it and feel it. And think, if I keep doing this, what am I going to look like? Where am I going to be? Where's my health going to be? Where's my mindset gonna be if I stay with this person, if I keep doing these drugs, keep smoking, keep drinking? All right, and try to envision it so much until you become disturbed, as Tony Robbins says, until you feel so disturbed about it that you want to create a different life and you wanna create a better vision, another life, and commit to that vision. Become so disturbed about the alterna alternative that there's no question about it. Every time you think about smoking or going back to your partner, you think, no. And you remember your vision, go, no, I'm not gonna do that. That doesn't serve this vision. And it starts with a vision, this can be my reality if I serve it, if I serve my greater interest, my greater vision. All right? 
If you will it to be, it will be. But it takes time. And that's okay, because you've got time. It's better to start now than to start when it's too late. I would have never started at all. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe if this has been useful for you. And there's heaps of other videos on all sorts of stuff. Feel free to peruse my channel. Otherwise, take care of yourselves, guys. And remember, everything in moderation. Including excess. But that's, that's for another video. You know what I'm saying? Take it easy, guys.